If you had to speculate, are most of the people with obesity in our modern food environment obesity sensitive, and most that don't have obesity, obesity resistant? I mean, by definition, yeah. And I would say that, again, if we're using <laughs> by definition, uh, that most people, period, are obesity sensitive, just given the rates of obesity globally. Um, I think the reason that I wanted to include this question is to really hammer home the point that like, Obesity, just like every other disease state that we've talked about, high blood pressure, cholesterol issues, diabetes, whatever the case is, it is the emerging emergence, the result of an interaction between genes and environment. That is like the main paradigm of this kind of stuff, the interaction between genes and environment. Because we'll we will hear people say, why has obesity increased in prevalence so much in the past 50 years, 100 years, human genes have not changed that much in the past 50 years, 100 years. There's not been massive human evolution in the past century, right? It's because the environment has changed so dramatically, right? And the expression of those same genes that we've had in this new environment that is engineered <laughs> in a certain way to hit those centers in our brain that really get us going, crank up our appetite, buy more, consume more, et cetera, that interaction is what leads to the emergence of this phenomenon that we observe as obesity. Obesity is like the symptom of all of this, practically, right? Um, the underlying issues are this gene environment uh, interaction. And so, like we made the case at the beginning of the weekend, some people are afforded a different hand from birth, right? The genes that they are dealt up front. And that might set them up between those genes, their upbringing, culture, environment coming up, that may set them up on a trajectory that is more susceptible to this modern food environment and they may be more prone to developing obesity due to factors both within and outside of their control. And other individuals may be dealt a hand that renders them more resistant. This, these are the folks who you know who are super lean no matter what they eat, no matter what they do, right? The people that are praised by society for being you know, paragons of virtue and self-control, even though it's probably just their genes in the context of the environment, that's just what happens to them. Right? They couldn't develop obesity if they tried in some situations. <laughs> right? And that's not because they're better people than anybody else, just the hand they were dealt in the current environment and other people are in a different situation. Yeah, if our culture rewarded a different body composition, they would be- As failures. it has in the past. That's right. You know? In yes. the past, it used to reward you know, larger bodies. Yeah, but. one of the thoughts, yeah, and if you were muscular, you were a criminal. So I was like, <laughs> well. Uh, one of the thoughts behind maybe some of the genetic components here and other recent changes is that body fatness, body composition was sort of, uh, from an evolutionary standpoint, regulated based on this uh, uh, scale between you didn't want to be so thin, so lean, so have so low body fat that if you got sick, you'd be, you would die, right, or starve to death. So that sort of risk, and you didn't want to be so large, so slow that you'd become a predatory risk, right? Mm -hmm. they, uh, and without this predation risk, we've had this genetic drift towards more and more, uh, and that's happened over longer than 50 to 100 years. That's been a long, long time coming. Um, you know, animals have not been like really- <laughs> Attacking humans in large numbers. Correct, yes. Um, and now this modern food environment is basically, uh, you know, kind of pounced upon um, this genetic drift. So, yeah, that's- There's that's, a lot of interesting hypotheses around that. <laughs> for I sure. agreed. Yeah. Okay.